thank you. How much was Chaley left? Oh, it was only... Come true. No, no, not you, my lord. Don't risk, don't risk it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I call upon our lady guest star to present the souvenir silver key to his lordship and so be the first to enter the creek. <laughs> Miss West, you'd better get into your togs to make the first plunge. Stay the night, you can't go back now. Hey, what's happened to the music? Keep lads' minds on their work, Mr. Bandmaster. Get back, lads, get back. Just one more, please. Looking at the mayor, Miss West. Jenny. But what about this, the telegram? It says... Oh, it's... that. I don't think I shall ever be going back to London. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can I help you? I want an engagement ring. A good one. Certainly, sir. Any particular stone? Diamond? Sapphire? Ruby? Well, you'd better get out what you've got, eh? Oh, how much is that one? Solitaires are very popular this year. Mm -hmm. And it's a very good stone, sir. 250 pounds. I want an engagement ring, not the crown jewels. Have you nothing around uh, 20 pounds? Certainly, sir. We've something here to suit everybody. Oh, Chaley, it's so beautiful. And it was so nice of you to put me into this hotel. Oh, it's nothing. I'm glad you like it. Ah, you look smashing with things. Well, I'm glad you think so, because in a way, it's your first present to me. Eh? Yes, I bought it with the money you gave me. But that was for hotel bill. 
Oh, I know, darling. But then, you see, when I came up here, I didn't think I was going to spend more than one night, and I didn't bring any clothes. <laughs> oh, I knew you'd understand. Now, I know you want the wedding as soon as possible, so I've been doing something about getting us a house. A house? Our house. But I've got a house. I know, darling. Your little house is very sweet, but just a teeny bit old-fashioned, don't you think? Well... Now, I've found a beauty in Upper Barfield. Upper Barfield? But they just don't know the value of money up there. Uh, Mr. Broadbent. Huh? Your bill. To date. What? <laughs> That? Mm-hmm. Now, this house has everything. Three bathrooms, modern conveniences, oak beams, paneling everywhere, and seven bedrooms. Seven bedrooms? But... We're getting married, aren't we? We shan't need more than one. Oh, Cheney. Oh! Welcome to the lucky owner. You got yourself a real bargain at last, Cheney, lad. A real bargain. And I'll tell you something else. Your beautiful fiancé drives a hard deal. A very hard deal indeed. Ah, it's your house. And she's bought it. And I got him down, darling. I did, didn't I, Mr. Popperwell? But he's been asking 6,000 for this place. I know, and I said that we wouldn't consider it at a penny over 5,800, and he said it was a gift at the price. Didn't you, Mr. Popperwell? Aye. And I'll stick to it, Chaley. It's a deal. No, oh, you're not catching me in the hop juke with your white elephants. And as for you, Ruthine, it's time we got things straight. It's me that signs the checks, and from now on, it's me that does all the talking. Chaley. <laughs> Joy, darling, I've made a terrible mess of things. That's nothing new for you. Yes, but this time I've gone too far. There's nothing else for it. It's a matter of life and death. You'll have to give him the old one, too. Night in bathroom routine. Oh, don't be stupid, Joy. Never fall for it, anyway. And don't you be stupid. The man isn't born who wouldn't. Do you want to come back here and starve? Oh, dear. Band, early morning tea, two and sixpence. Rest on four pound, eighteen three. Can't be true. You know damn well it's true. He's been living on the fat of the land. Your fat son. No, damn it, it's my fat and all. You can't really blame her. She's never had much money. She's making up for it now. She's found a soft touch. Now make an end of it while you've still got the price of a bus fare. Come on, come on. Get weaving. Miss West, sir? Yes, she left a message for you to go straight up. Oh? Take the lift to suite number eight, sir. I want suite number eight. Yes, sir. Who is this? Chaley. Come right in, darling. Now listen to me, Ruthie. I can't go chucking my money about any longer. Where are you? I'm right in here having a bath. Bath? I'm making myself beautiful for you. Oh dear. Chaley. Huh? Fetch me those little things off the bed, will you? Bed. You are looking in the bedroom, aren't you? <laughs> Something on. Chaley. Ch 
Good lad. Chaley. Ah. Get me a cigarette off the dressing table. There in the bedroom, too. No, no. no. Uh, 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 uh. Listen, Ruthine, I want to talk to you serious like about about. Oh, look, supposing someone were to come in. You're not shy, are you? No, not shy. It's just... That's stone it. That's stone it. Cigarettes. You always do things your own way, but as I see it, you're giving up far too soon. I've waited half my life for Chaley Broadbent. This time, I'm going to get him right out of my system, for good and all. You know best, love. I do. Wh where are you thinking of going? I don't care. I've got enough money for a week's holiday. After that, I shall look for a job. Right away this time. London. I don't know. I'm licked, Uncle. I'll get you a drink, love. Barfield Times. Oh, if you'd like to send someone round here right away, I'll give you quite a story on Councillor Chaley Broadbent. Oh, we'll cover it, Miss West. Uh, right away. Hey, where are you going? My last job, Uncle. Listen, Ethel, I've, I've got to talk to you. It's... I'm sorry, Chili. I've no time for you now. It's important. Good morning. Hasn't your paper got any men on the staff? I'm not here only for the paper. I'm here as Chaley Broadbent's fiancé. Well, I must say, he's a very fast worker. He only got disengaged to me a few hours ago. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You know perfectly well he was going to marry me before he ever set eyes on you. Now, really, darling, I don't know what you're up to, but if you think I'm going to fall for that one... We've been walking out for years. Cross your heart? But he must have told you. Never a word. Cross my own. Well, it's a snake. The coward. I think we'd better have a drink. 
So that's how it is, you see. A girl can't go on dancing forever. The muscles start to stiffen up. So what do you do? Either you go out to work, or else you find somebody with a bit of money, and you get married, if you're lucky. You do see, don't you? Of course I do, Ruthie. I mean, it's not as if I were clever and I could get a proper job like you. You could. I'm sure you could. No. I think you're much cleverer than I am. That's sweet of you, Ethel. But I'm not. But you are. But you've made Jaylee into a normal human being. Could I get him to spend any money? Or take an interest outside his warehouse? Or so much as consider a house in Upper Barfield? It seems I'm quite a girl. <laughs> you are. You've emancipated him. Emancipated what? Emancipated him. Oh. And I couldn't even get him to change his collar on a Saturday night. Well, I'm glad I've done some good for somebody. But don't imagine it's going to end there. Now, now listen. Chaley Broadbent's been having a game with us. So now we're going to have a game with him. This is what we'll do. Well? Dame Broadbent? Aye. Chaley Broadbent? Aye. Sign for it. What is it? A writ. What's this? Another writ. Morning, Governor. Writs, he said. Did you hear him? Ritz. Best open them. You open them. Oh, not me. Two of them. But Ritz for what? You open one, I open the other. By gum, it's a mare. Breach your promise. But there must be some mistake. It says 5,000 pounds. What's yours? It's from Ethel. Ethel? Breach your promise. 200 pounds she'll settle for. Oh, 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 oh. Take it easy, Governor. Take it easy. This will shake the mayor and corporation, eh? <laughs> no, no, this is going too far. We can't publish this tomorrow. Uh, who thought this one up? I did. It's all right. I've checked for libel. Libel? It, it, it's not a question of libel. You're an interested party. Well, that can't be helped. We run a newspaper, and this is news. After all, Uncle, we have a duty to our readers. Duty to our readers. I'll see about that. Well, it's happened. You're in it up to the neck, and you can't say I didn't warn you. If I follow my own feelings instead of listening to you moaning and groaning every time I put my hand in my pocket to buy a ring for Ethel? Ethel? You can forget her from now on. If you wed Ethel, it'll cost you 5,000. You get clear for 200 if you marry the actress. There's no question about it. No question? I'm... Hello. Is that you, Kayleigh Broadbent? Yes, Mr. Higgins. Well, I want to see you in the Mayor's Parlor right away. Yes, Your Worship. Mayor's Parlor. Oh, dear. This is it. Now, take my advice, Kayleigh. Go for the cheapest. Oh, shut your mouth and leave me to myself. backing out now. If this isn't settled today, it'll be all over Barfield tomorrow, and we'll all be finished. You, my white hope. Even for a private citizen, your behavior's beyond the pale, but for a town councillor, it's calamitous. You've promised to wed two women. Before you leave this parlor, you're going to keep the good name of Barfield out of the courts by marrying one and paying the other to keep quiet. I'll give you just five minutes to make up your mind. I don't need five minutes, Your Worship. Listen, Ethel, lass. I've behaved badly, right badly. I've been mean and selfish, and I'm sorry. Sorry to the bottom of my heart for the trouble I've caused. And that bit goes for you too, Ruthine. 
I'm not much of a catch, Ethel. But I'll tell you this, lass. I love you. And if you'll have me now, I'll make it up to you one way or the other. That's telling you straight. In front of witnesses. Well, what about it? Come on, lass, try. Uh, yes, Julie. There'll be no one else, Ethel. Never anymore. Even though it's going to cost me 5,000 pounds. Oh, Chaney, darling, I wouldn't touch a penny of your money. You wouldn't? But you must. Now, steady on. She's happy. Aren't you, love? Yes, but I'm not. You give Ruthie and her 5,000. What? What? Well, he can afford it, and we owe it to her. No, but we're as good as man and wife now. It's your brass you're flinging about. Yes, Ethel, it's your money. Well, I don't care. She's done more for me than I can ever repay. Come on. You're not getting out of it now. Well, Ethel's got something there. You've done something for our Chaley. How much did we say? You know. Get on with it. My pen won't write. Here, try mine. Or mine. Or mine. I prefer my own. What's the date? The 23rd. My dad's birthday. And it's still 5,000 pounds. Oh. Bunch of flowers with your friends. Hey, Jaylee. Hey. Yeah, what's up, lad? You look right jittery. Oh, man, a ruinous morning, ruinous. Then you're marrying. Oh. You've taken the irrevocable step. And a, and a right expensive business is turning out. Now, as opposed to a rag merchant, it is. Now, if it could only have been me, I shouldn't be counting the costs. Not with a girl like Ruthine. Ruthine? Glamour. Ah, I've never seen such glamour. Ah, if I'd been lucky, man, she could have had everything. She could? Aye. Duke, just suppose, just suppose you were engaged to Ruthine. I'm supposing. And you found out she'd been given a present by an old admirer. What would you do? I'd chuck it right back in his face. Aye, but suppose it were 5,000 pounds. 5,000, 10,000 wouldn't matter to me. I got nearly 100,000 tucked away in Yorkshire Bank. I wouldn't want any of his money polluting the air around my fiancé. Well, that's fine. Let's shake on it. Shake on what? And what you've just said, you're giving the money back. Oh, I promise you I would. Oh, I really would if she were mine. You've just fixed yourself the best bargain you and I ever made, lad. Here. She's all yours, if you can make her. Good luck to you. Well, you might say, uh, just like a broad bent, asking us all here. <laughs> but, um, well, times are changing, you know, and, uh, we're making a fresh start, and, uh, so, um, well, let's all have a drink. <laughs> 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 It hurts. 